Hello, folks. Maybe, maybe having that there in some distance is good. For I am the one, the only, I am a hobo Tom. I do apologize for all of the ridiculous nonsense that's been going on recently. I have just been super busy. And I'm still trying to figure out positions. So this actually is pretty good. So it's not picking up too much. Yeah, not picking up too much back of you, which is good. So I do apologize for all the weird things that have been happening. It's called work, folks. When you're not getting that sweet YouTube money, you actually have to have your own job. As you can tell by, well, the only wrestling shirt I could find right now, I think they're all in the laundry. So that's going to be weird. I might Gargano, my DIY shirt, Gargano Eat Champa, because no one will do it for you. So you do it yourself. So before I get the show started, a little recap for SmackDown. It's been a while since I've done this. That's pretty cool. And then tomorrow I have to make another video. Yeah, I can do that at night. Though. That's okay. Or even in the morning. I don't know. We'll f <laughs> it might be a two-parter. Wait a second. I have to find my camera. I have to plug my camera in. And then... So unfortunately the bad thing was yesterday I couldn't make my video. I kind of forgot my cell phone when I needed it. So I did not have a camera for that. So instead, probably... Actually, probably tomorrow. <laughs> I'll make that... It's a really simple video. It's just a three-year anniversary show. I'm still shocked and awed that I have not been kicked off. But it's thanks to you, my many subscribers, such as Rory Sr. Thank you very much, your, sir, for your for your subscription. And whenever you like, share, comment, subscribe, find me in chat. You, sir, Mr. Rory Sr., you, sir, are a master of that six count. Yep, that's right. That's exactly what you thought would happen. You get a little video tribute for you, a little thank you. And you don't have to do anything for it, except for, like, subscribe. For now. Maybe that might change. 
I'm honestly shocked that with the whole pandemic situation, COVID-19, YouTube could have, and maybe this is thinking too altruistically of a corporate entity, but they could have just said, you know what, everyone's monetized, make what little money you can during this time. Who knows? I might not have, have had to go back to work. There's an idea for you. And then Dave Tron, 90, 95. Can't tell. Yeah, I think it's 95. Dave Tron, 95. You, sir, are a master of that air guitar. And you know what, Mrs. Number One Fan, you can walk right out of here. senior yeah and he subscribed you got a little video whichever one I kind of feel like doing it for now whichever one I feel like setting up um, Dave Tron 95 I'll call him that I can't I forget if it's a five or a nine I wrote down very quickly and Mrs. number one fan yeah, and they found me over in the discord where I am the one the only I am a hobo Tom you yeah, like to thank everyone for watching um, this is one of my used to be normal SmackDown routine, except for, I guess, the boss says I do good work and wants me to work more. I don't know. What can I say about that? So let's talk about some SmackDown. And I'm not going to talk about next week's schedule, because next week is going to be a mess. So let's get to this, this episode of SmackDown. And it just felt like a very underwhelming SmackDown for some reason. Um, I like YouTube. I watched it a lot. I guess I'm very niche specific when it comes to my YouTube watching habits. I have no idea who Logan Paul is. If you guys want to send a comment and say, Hobo Tom, get out from under that rock and figure out who Logan Paul is. Again, feel free to send me an email. I check those. Um, I check them. Sometimes. Maybe. Every so often, in a couple months, possibly. Because I'll tell you what, a lot of the show was dedicated to him, and a lot of the show just fell flat. Uh, starts off, as always, a good 10 minutes talking session. Daniel Bryan, Jey Uso, they booked themselves for a street fight, which was a lot of a lackluster street fight, by the way. Then Edge came out, delivered his promo. Edge is kind of like stalking around backstage. Ooh, is that muscle? I have muscle again. That's good. I have been losing a little bit of weight recently. I need to lose a good 30 pounds more by May 15th so I don't look like an FPOS. I'm going to go on a fishing trip. Because eventually in May, I'm going to show you two fishing trips. The, oh, oh, the 
fishing trip where angels sing and the hobo fishing trip. I'll let you, the my YouTube audience, decide. And also, um, well, well, I'll get to that later. So with this, Edge was kind of like stalking around the backstage. It is what it was. Then Alpha Academy, which is Chad Gable and Otis come out, cut a little promo. They say, yeah, even though we don't like them, we're scouting them. We'll, we're on their side. They're with the Rude Dogs of Dolph Ziggler and the glorious Robert Rude. Although, as of recently, he has lost his glorious theme. I'll defend up to the end. He was so much better in NXT with that, though. Just fell flat with a kind of regular audience. Who knows? Oh, who was it? It was Jay Tan I was talking about. I think it was at the one um, Impact show. Yeah, where it got kind of, where it was okay. It was like a weird fit. It was a weird, it was a good show. It was a weird show. And not necessarily bad. Uh, again, the, I think WWE is going to start touring again soon. Baseball season starting up, so they're going to need to find a new Thunderdome, baby. So, who knows? Maybe they will come here to Daytona Beach. God knows they're not doing anything at the Civic Center, so they could do that there. Daytona would welcome them with open arms. Say, yes, bring in all that fat WWE money. Because we need it. Oh, and I found out something, too. And then I'll get to... Uh, um, I'll, I'll get to the after, after this match. So it was Alpha Academy and Rude Dogs taking on the Mysterios and the Street Profits. First thing that happened, like, they got, got all the ring introductions. The... Faces toss the heels out of the ring. Then it's a dive time for everyone. Rey Mysterio started with a Steve Senton. Then it was his son, Rey Mysterio. Then Ford came flying out. And um, Angelo Dawkins, the only person who's not going to do a dive, probably. We're still in the ring. We come back. And that takes us to commercial break. That was weird. Um, and then we come back. Uh, in the ring, the heels have control of the match. As well, Normally, the heels have control of the match outside the ring. Weird stuff happening. Then, then you have the strength of Dawkins and Otis with the double axe handle smash. Again, I will always mark out for those old moments. Then you have the two big guys. Uh, 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 Dolph comes in. Classic. What was it? Oh, classic wrestling. Uh, fr the front chancery, the front face lock. Whatever you want to call it. It's the front face. It's the front headlock, which, which I've always referred to it as. Um, then Otis gets back in. Him and Dawkins, they do the classic big guy double clothesline. Both of them fall. Dawkins gets the tag. Eventually, Otis crawls over. Uh, Ford. Again, he's so nimble. He does that kick. Kind of jumps around a little bit. Sets him himself for the standing... Moonsault, which I still find amazing. Like, how he does, how people do that and not fall on their head and paralyze themselves. Amazing. Uh, Chad, Chad Gale, however, he does that great deadlift German suplex. He, Ford gets stretched out by Chad Gale. Then Otis does a second rope splash. <laughs> he literally, like, bounced off of poor Montez Ford. Bianca, you better give your man some extra special attention tonight. He deserves it. The heel, the face, yeah, the heels win. Alpha Academy and the and the Rude Dogs win. It was an okay match. I think at this point I'm like, wait, WrestleMania, there's there's still a go home show after this, and then it's gonna be like the the Friday of the. This match was a cheeseburger. New Japan opened up the Pandora's box, the can of worms, the, the, the box, the, the, the five pound bag with 10 pounds of, of monkey crap in it, whatever you want to call it, when they had Wrestle Kingdom for two nights. Now WWE's not only doing WrestleMania for, for two nights, 
Now they're saying, oh, this is going to be WrestleMania Friday. And they're even doing that for... I don't know. NXT, that's right. The NXT TakeOver is going to be Wednesday and Thursday. Even though they're supposed to be back on Tuesdays. So really... I'll watch the tu- I'll watch the Tuesday show and I'll get into my whole different change of schedule at the end. It's going to be weird. There's, there's going to be a lot of WWE product. Not necessarily the best thing. It's a, it can be a long slog. I know in trying to watch the two nights of Wrestle Kingdom, it just felt like it dragged on literally all night. And I know it was started at 2 a.m. So I'd take a nap. Wake up 2 a.m., go to bed at 7. That was five hours. The sun comes up about seven o'clock, about 6.50. I go back to bed. If you have a real job, you can't do that. It's just not plausible. I considered going to WrestleMania. The one thing is, one, well, one, the ticket price. Even though I think the one tickets I saw were, were better, $87 for the, the head in the cloud seats. But I think the bigger issue would have been going back and forth, driving the I-4 corridor, and then parking. Park, park, they kill you with the parking. I think when I went to WrestleMania, which is, by the way, up, the ticket's up there on the door of wrestling. Like, it was 50 bucks for a parking spot. Man, that sucks. Um, I know... Oh, I, oh! If oh, if they ever came to Daytona Beach, and they so could do it, because the, the racetrack holds a hundred thousand plus. Then you set up. You could have a, oh, you could have a really sweet setup. Everyone faces the stage. You could have three rings. It would be amazing. Again, hunt again, Mister Levesque. Hit me up one day. Again, hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. I'll tell you how to do that. But it just seems so long. And now you're getting WWE product Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Well, Monday. You get it. Oh, wait, you do get it all week long. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's seven days of WWE product. Listen, I like my pro wrestling. Even I have to say, whoa, you need to tranquil a little bit. And I'll get into more, more details about next week anyway. Later. And then we had Adam Pierce and Boo Sonya Deville. Boo! Boo Sonya Deville. Boo! Well, this time she was being more heelish, though. She was being, I don't know, it was, she was weird. <laughs> there were comments about her. In Discord, I can't mention. Um, Paul Heyman shows up, says, let's make this a hold harmless street fight. So that way my client, Jay Uso, is not responsible for stuff. Whatever. Seth Rollins comes out and literally, a, I'll give you this mental image. It looked like a purple suit that got bleached. Because it was like purple and white and weird stuff. Uh, he comes out to do an interview. Cesaro's there. Yeah. Corey Graves is there. They have some terrible suits. Um, I think the one fading one was, was okay. It was different. How much are those suits costing Seth? Although I do think I know where he's getting them. But they're not paying me money to plug their product. Rainbows. But yeah. Those are some god-awful suits. Or at least this one was. It just looked... Yeah. Um, so yeah, they had an interview again. A recap with that. Shannon Baszler then comes out, has a match against Natalia. They like trade shots, which is weird. They trade. They tried trade submissions. Then they did a trade of roll ups, and eventually Shannon Baszler ate the pin. I'm serious. This match was a three minute match. That's not good, especially for the tag team champion against the tag. 
If Shayna Baszler totally squashed Natalia in three minutes, I could understand that. But not this. This was weird. Again, uh, from there, it was a trade of Rawls. I'm like, that's it? This is how you treat your women's champions? Like chumps? Horrible. Absolutely de degrading. Especially Shayna Baszler, because she's cute. To me, it's looking cuter. She just looks mean. And Natalia just looks like a Walmart mom. Or a Kmart mom. With enhancements. Indeed. So then, so then, yeah, so then, of course, if Nia Jax gets involved and Tamina gets involved, then the Riot Squad showed up. It's like, and the only thing, the only thing I noticed with the Riot Squad is that they have the same colored Tiger Strike panties. That's the only thing I care about the Riot Squad for now. Uh, then, after that, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke showed up. And then after they showed up, Lana and Naomi showed up. Now, there are rumors that Naomi's going to go to the Hurt Business, so we'll see what happens. I do like the fact that Naomi and Lana are wearing the same matching gear. This is the one positive you can take out of the women's tag team division, minus Natalia and Tamina, although they are kind of second generation. You just call them the second generation of women. Because, again... You had Brett on Natalia's side and Snuka on Tamina's side. So I'm sure there's some, I mean, they're probably amazingly well-trained. They just never use them. Or when they do use them, they use them in such the wrong, god-awful, terrible ways. And do I apologize for that weird, one weird little, like, piece of skin between, like, the fingernail. And like the rest of the finger. Everyone gets it. It's just annoying. But this match, you know what? It was a piece of toast. Then there was Carmella, who's wearing her hiked up thong outfit. She still looks like a 50 year old MILF. Although Billy Kay was there. Billy Kay's still cute looking. Kudos to Billy Kay for getting her face on TV. And she gave her resume with her big picture to Carmella. For what good that does. Then this is where this is where I tuned out. I have no clue who, who Logan Paul is. I am ignorant out of necessity and choice out of all a lot of techno technology things. I got into YouTube late. Um, at one time, YouTube used to be the Wild West. Now it's kind of tamed down. It's become regulated. Twitter is the Wild West, but then they're slowly changing over. There's Patreon. Remember, folks, I'm not making you guys pay for all this free content. So just remember that when you say, should I subscribe to him? It doesn't cost me anything. I'll subscribe to them. Good stuff. So yeah, so I, I don't I, I I like my YouTube shows. The few YouTube shows I do like, Oculus and Pure is pretty cool. I like the whole uh, Warhammer forty k. Although I do like the whole War, Warhammer forty k thing. Um, it's not so much people I like to watch; it's content. Again, Warhammer forty k is pretty cool. I think that is Lutein oh nine. Oculus Imperia. Uh, whoever makes the, the video animations is freaking amazing. The live action stuff of Warhammer looks pretty cool. The Guardsman Guardsman's awesome. Uh, Steve Fear and Larson, I mean, Cultaholic World Culture. Fight Bible. Fight Perfect Bible. Or whatever they call themselves now. They're really fun to watch. Again, go, go check out Fight Bible. They're pretty cool. Who else do I like on YouTube? Uh, Jim Cornette. Uh, Russell Hub. When people do reviews of movie scenes. When ex experts review this. I think uh, GQ experts review this. 
So, yeah, it's, it's like that for me. And, of course, the hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show. And, by the way, ladies, I'm still single. So, yeah, so I don't, I don't get it. Um, this, again, has that feeling of this is your life. Although Sammy's trailer to his documentary looked good. Logan Paul looked confused. Kevin Owens came out, stunned Sami Zayn. I just want to see Kevin Steen versus El Generico at WrestleMania. Again, only thing I care about. Uh, Kevin Owens shoved Logan Paul. Logan Paul looked absolutely confused. Like they, they have to do a better job of coaching up these these celebrities for WrestleMania, I guess. Then Bianca Belair had an interview. Uh, Bianca versus Carmella. Bianca got beat up. Got sent to the ropes. Carmella tied her hair to the ropes. Uh, Bianca, pretty big clothesline. Then she starts her comeback. Uh, Carmella eventually gets eats the eats the um, KOD. Yeah, end of that match. Sasha Banks gets involved. Shouts to the title. They both look at the sign. There's still one week left, and I don't even know if this is going to be on the pre-show. This is that Friday is going to feel so weird, and I'm only going to be covering parts of it. Again, I'll tell you guys about that later. Then we had a. Baron Corbin interview. Yeah. Uh, Titus O'Neil also had an interview. And it was more with Paul Heyman and Edge. And this is going to take us... Oh, wait, yeah, the Bianca Belair match. I'll, I'll, I'll add it in there, but that was okay. That was, that was a can of soup match. But then we get to the J the main event, Jey Uso taking on Daniel Bryan. This could have been good. It was a street fight, and Jey Uso was the only one who came out in proper street fight attire. So, eh. Daniel Bryan came out in wrestling pants. If you're going to show up into to a street fight, you have to wear jeans, a jean jacket, a t-shirt, elbow pads, knee pads, um, Timberland boots, or some kind of tactical boot. You have to look like you're going to be in a street fight. You come out to a street fight in a wrestling gear. I don't know. It's just, even in a wrestling TV show, this seems out of place. Uh, Daniel Bryan, he gets tossed around a little bit to the, and then goes to the outside. Uh, Jay again. Gets, gets into the ring. Then Daniel Bryan takes, uh, he, he takes a chair, of course, to Daniel Bryan. Throws a ch chair in the ring. I wouldn't give up that chair for anything. Are you kidding me? I, I'd still wow, wow, over the head, headshots, hospitalization, ankle, pulmonize them with the ankle. Uh, once he throws that chair in, Daniel Bryan grabs the chair, beats him up. Ron Roman Reigns comes on, interrupts the match, sits down in a very nice plush chair. And there's the yes kiss in the corner. Uh, Uso rolls out. He pulls out a toolkit, grabs a chain. Again, if you're going to wrap a steel chain... Do I have any... Oh, I have a wire. I have a wire I can use as a prop. I like props. Say this was a chain. If you wrap that around your fist, like so, on, on, on some kind of fashion, listen, this should be able to... If this was a piece of chain, this should be able to bust anyone open. Okay? The fact that people weren't busted open is kind of disappointing. We're going to have a street fight. You have to have blood. You gotta be some color, baby. So, especially if you're gonna just hit him with a clenched fist with a chain wrapped around it, do a splash, end of match. Daniel Bryan should never kick out of that. That was weird. Um, they go back to the outside. Jey Uso tried to suplex Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan reversed that. He suplexed him from the step, an extra foot up onto the floor. Uh, Daniel Bryan then. Takes a chair to, to, to Jey Uso. Saw some yes kicks. Uh, I was hoping, if because there was a chain there, I was kind of hoping he was going to wrap that chain around his shin and do yes kicks with that. That would have been interesting. Daniel Bryan did kind of like wrap it around his forearm. He, tried, he like coiled it, started to drop the 12 6 elbows. That was okay. Um, he, he nailed the drop kick. Jey Uso had the chain. Should, Jey Uso should have nailed him with a chain or something. And then Daniel Bryan very simply puts in the yes, the label lock. Jey Uso taps out. 
Roman Reigns looks looks embarrassed again. Daniel Bryan then takes it up, takes it, takes all his aggressions out on Edge, sitting ringside, and then he begins to. So with the show being, it was a decent show. That last match was a ham sandwich. Um, next week's going to be a, kind of a long week. It's also a little bit busy week. So just to let you guys know, as far as the schedule goes, so this video is going to go up probably tomorrow morning. I'll post it like I normally would any SmackDown video because it just has to go processing and editing. Hopefully Saturday. While this is going through the whole YouTube thing, I'm going to make my three-year anniversary show with a special on how to make pickles because I'm having an amazing beef sandwich with um, pickles and pickled onions, cheese curds, and waffle fries. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be the first time I had meat and booze <laughs> for 40 days and 40 nights. And then Sunday is going to be Easter Mania, baby! So look forward to that probably Sunday morning. I'll be making that either tomorrow morning or tomorrow night. I'll figure out the logistics of that later. I um, have the Easter Mania card set up, minus one match. I have no idea who I'm going to put put in that match, so we'll see. And then next week, so Monday, I have to work. So Monday will probably be just a review of Raw. So I'll get back... 8.30, probably just say, screw it, go to the gym. Watch kind of the replay of it. So, Monday will just be a review of Raw. Again, probably put up on Tuesday. Tuesday, because WWE, I think, has decided to change its schedule. I think Tuesday starts the new SmackDown schedule. Or not SmackDown, but new NXT so Tuesday is going to be an NXT soup night, and I have and I have to make a new graphic for that. Wednesday I don't have to work, I hope. So it's going to be a review of AEW. Eventually I'm going to go back up to AEW, go back up to Jacksonville, and catch and catch them live. Thursday, because that's going to be the fourth, I think. It's either the fourth or the third. My calendar's covered up with stuff, so I can't figure out what it is. No, it can't be the third. Well, whatever the Thursday is in April, who cares? Impact Wrestling, and I get to do a review of that again. I get to do a live stream of Impact. So that'll be a little bit different. I don't know. It's normally... Thursday's pasta night. Fresh pasta night. I don't know. I'll, I'll think of something for that. I'll have to make a new graphic. I have to get rid of some. Friday, I have to work. So I'm going to do... So I'll check out the recaps of... Smackdown, that'll be a little bit later. So yeah, for the most part, I'll, so I guess my new schedule, Monday Night Raw, Tuesday NXT, Wednesday AEW, Thursday is Impact, Friday Smackdown. Saturday, I know I have to work and I know I have to close. So I'm going to miss the first half of day one. But I can always catch the, hi the highlights and I have multiple websites. I can use to check out to see what I missed. Um, Sunday, I'll be able to watch a little bit more of day two of WrestleMania. And that would cover that week. And then we'll see what happens with work and stuff later. So you'll see a little bit more of me. Again, I do apologize, but you know what? Work beckons as, as you'll be able to see. From the very boring life of one hobo Tom. It's wake up. Go to work. Go to other job. 
go to gym, watch wrestling, sleep, or something to that effect. It's really close. Again, and, and then hobo. I do need to hobo a little bit more often. I've been lax about that too. But I don't know. Work. Work pays. Hoboing pays too, though. Not as much. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And again, be like Rory Sr. Again, become a subscriber. Ho hopefully there'll be some better shows coming on. Um, remember, I can show a little bit more of Impact. Well, was it AEW too? I honestly forget. I'll have to review my archives and see what I did for... No, wait. Did I do that? No, for the pay-per-views, I can. Impact doesn't care as long as it's really small. And I can show highlights of it. WWE will just... What did I show? It wasn't NXT. Ring of Honor's not too bad. That's just a lot of wrestling next week, though. Oh, everyone else take care. And in case you only watch this... You're out with family and friends on Easter. Happy Easter, folks, from the one, the only.